Hey, it's Jason again from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Well, I wanted to talk today about overwintering perennials and shrubs. This is a good time for it. My uh, greenhouses are surrounded by snow and it's a bright winter day, about three degrees Celsius outside. So it's a good time to talk about overwintering perennials and shrubs. But if you're starting a backyard nursery, you might start with the question of why? I mean, why wouldn't you just start seeds, start cuttings, buy in plugs, finish plants early in the season, sell out and then you don't have to worry about greenhouses you don't have to worry about watering over the winter you don't have to worry about the inevitable losses that will happen in overwintering your plants and i guess my answer to that is that some plants just sell better and command better prices if they're a little bit larger so it takes a season or two to size them up like my roses for instance i take the cuttings one year I overwinter them in the cutting stage, I pot them the next spring. They're usually to a small sellable size in their second season, and if I overwinter them a second time, they're usually a big beautiful selling size that I can command bigger prices for. So that's the reason why you'd want to consider overwintering. And let's just say you do have that business strategy of getting in and fast and getting out quickly as well. Well, sometimes you won't sell all your plants, and then what do you do? So at some point or another, if you're running a backyard nursery in a temperate climate, you're going to have to consider the idea of learning how to overwinter plants uh, with some good rate of success so you don't lose too many plants over the winter. Let me show you some of my considerations here. Something I find useful to do is to sort plants into two categories. Those that remain in active growth during the winters and those that go quite dormant. This bed here in my second greenhouse, I keep for those plants that go mostly or completely dormant over the winter, and their needs are much different. You should overwinter them much drier. In fact, if you water them at the beginning of the season and they don't heat up too much in the greenhouse, you can probably get away with not watering them again until spring. So that's what you do with the dormant plants. The ones that are more active require more watering and more care over the winter. Now, one thing I wanted to cover at this point here is, why do I keep them in greenhouses? Now the greenhouse gives me a controlled environment, and it's not for the warmth. It might be the sound, sound a little paradoxical, but I'm not doing it to protect it from the cold. It gets to the same temperature in here as it does outside. I am doing it to protect them from moisture and wind. Now, the moisture would keep them too wet over the winter, and that goes for both dormant and active material. I want to be able to control the level of moisture, and the wind would tend to dry them out. So you have two competing forces there, and what the greenhouse helps me to do is to control both of those, so that I can keep them uh, from drying out too much, and to keep them from getting too wet. Now one hazard of the greenhouse is that it does tend to fluctuate in temperature quite a lot. On a sunny day, and it's not too sunny out today, but uh, even on a sunny day like this I can see a 10 degree Celsius gain in my greenhouse over the course of the day. And on a very sunny day, when it's, uh, it's bright outside and the greenhouse is closed, you might even see up to a 20 or 25 degree swing upwards uh, Celsius in the greenhouse, which you would like to prevent. So on days when it's sunny and you're managing the conditions inside your greenhouse, it's really important that you roll up the sides, open the doors, and let fresh cold air come into your greenhouse. You're not trying to keep the plants warm. You're actually just trying to keep them at the temperature of the outside and protect them from excess moisture or wind. Plants like these ones, the, the columbine here, or uh, dianthus, stay winter active, or uh, opportunistically so. Even my roses uh, can be semi-evergreen as well. So you have to treat them a little bit different, and mainly it's on the moisture. You want to make sure that they stay watered, and I'll emphasize that that is particularly so before you have a a very cold freezing patch. So if you look at the weather and you're looking at low negative temperatures, uh, you'll want to get some water into these plants before that happens because once it does happen, it'll be hard to get water to them and they will suffer desiccation damage really, really quickly. And while I have you over here, I want to show you one of the main winter enemies, which is Botrytis. And you may have trouble seeing this grayish color and the little poof of um, of spores that come off of this material, but 
this is botrytis damage or rot that happens over the winter and unfortunately botrytis likes the same kinds of conditions uh, still air cool temperatures and moisture so um, you'll have to take special care of removing disease tissue and in fact any excess leaves or foliage or dormant material off of your plants so when you overwinter you'd uh, be better off overwintering them fairly low fairly close to the pot and without too much extra plant material sitting on them that can rot on you over the winter all right, those are my basic tips on overwintering perennials and shrubs and roses and even small trees in the greenhouse over the winter for your backyard nursery. If you have any questions on this, please don't hesitate to leave any comments below. And I will end with one final thought is be realistic in your expectations. If you're a zone five, uh, without heat, you're probably not going to overwinter plants that are rated to a zone 8 or 9. In my uh, nursery situation, I don't try to go one, except one zone above the climate zone that my plants are rated for. So I, I push everything for a zone 8, that's what I grow here. And if I over, can overwinter a zone 9, I'll try to do that too, just to be a bit adventurous. But I won't go any above that. Alright, thanks so much for watching.